Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. Today I'm going to be filming a video on how to get a 4.0 in college and some organization and study hacks, tips and tricks that I've learned throughout my schooling. And yeah, before we get into the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified every single time I post, leave a like and a comment and let's get right on into the video. So my very, very first tip to um, achieve a 4.0 GPA in school would be to create a priority list and what I mean by priority list is just grab a piece of paper and write down everything that's important to you everything that you want to dedicate time to so for example work gym school if you play sports clubs um, family friends stuff like that and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna number them what is the most important to what is the least important so I'll give you an example so my priority list is one, God, so church, studying the Bible, etc, etc. Two would be school, so going to college, making sure my grades are on point. Three is family. Four is work. Five is gym. Six is friends. Um, those are just kind of the way that I like to organize things. Some people have their priorities in different order, but this is the most important thing that you want to do first because you can't make plans. You can't like basically you can't succeed in life if you don't know where your priorities are because if your priorities aren't aligned then you're not going to know what to do and what i mean by that is if school if like you have gym above school for example that means that instead of spending time doing homework you're going to the gym so you're not going to get good grades because you're not putting school above the gym things like that or same with like hanging out with friends like if you have school above friends that means that you're willing to say oh no i can't hang out tonight i need to do school work you know what i'm saying so i feel like making a list of your priorities is number one the most important thing that you can do in order to achieve a 4.0 in school so the next thing to do is to set realistic monthly goals so when I create goals, I create four, and each goal is a different part of my life. So the first one is academic goal, a social media slash um, YouTube goal, a money goal, and a fitness goal. And so they're really realistic, so I'll share my April goals with you guys. So in the month of April, I want to reach 300 YouTube subscribers. I want to have at least a 3.5 GPA in school. I want to have $2,000 saved and I want to go to the gym three times a week. Now a lot of these are like kind of low balling because I want to be able to aim higher. Like, does that make sense? Like, I'm not going to give myself outrageous like, oh, I want to hit a thousand subscribers. I want a 4.0 GPA. I want 10,000 saved. I want to go to the gym seven days a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to be extremely realistic with yourself and with your schedule when you're creating goals. Another really good way of achieving your goals is creating weekly goals. And so each of my weekly goals, I create four that, that was five. I create four weekly goals and each of my weekly goals helps to reinforce my monthly goals. So for next week, because it's the first week of school, my week I haven't set my weekly goals yet, but they're probably going to be like, turn in all your assignments, um, maybe reach like 210 subscribers, say don't spend any money, um, or stick to your budget plan, something like that, and then go to the gym three times, things like that. And so then every single week I have these like little goals to check off, and as I'm checking them off, they help to reinforce my monthly goals, if that makes sense. And that is an extremely useful and I feel like realistic way to set goals, because a lot of the time people try to set goals that, and it's okay to, to like, you know, want to reach the stars, but you have to be extremely realistic with yourself and with your life, because you really can't achieve anything you set your mind to, but you... You can't just want to be super fit in a day. Like it takes time to get to your goal. So you wanna give yourself that realistic time so you don't give up and quit on your goals, if that makes sense. So my next tip is using a planner. And if you're in college, then I'm gonna kind of go off that. If you're not in college, this might not be applicable to you, but you can still kind of use it to help you in your life, if that makes sense. So what I like to do is when the start of each quarter comes, I take all of my syllabi and I write it for just one month. So. This is April, for example. On April 8th, it's my first day of school, so what I'm gonna do on that day is take all of my syllabuses and write them all into my planner. And I only do this for one month because I don't like doing the whole year because it, like when the start of May comes, I can sit down and I can rewrite everything so my mind can be focused on my May goals and my May assignments. So in April, I go and I write all of my goals down, and then when I'm setting up a week, once a week on Sunday, I'll go in, I'll look at all the assignments that are due that week, I'll write them all in, and then I'll write kind of like a homework and a study plan in order to get all of my assignments done, if that makes sense. And this is extremely important because if you don't have a planner, you're never gonna, you're gonna be looking at like, what, six, five syllabuses every single day, like trying to figure out like, wait, what do I have to do today? And it's just so unorganized. If you have such a cluttered way of organizing things, it's gonna reflect poorly in your grades and in your life because 
because if you don't have your life like very very organized and clean your your life isn't going to reflect that if that makes sense another really cool uh, interesting tidbit is to block out time now you do hear a lot of youtubers talking about this because it's very true what I mean by blocking out time is like let's say on Monday I am in school from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. I could say that from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'm gonna go to the library and I'm gonna study if you block out time like that like oh from this time to this time I'm gonna study and if you write that down and like put that in your phone to know like this is my study time it'll kind of help you to study because if you just say oh I'm gonna study when I get home well it's like when because you have a million other things you want to do you know if you want to go to the gym if you want to hang out with your friends if you have to work like you want to make sure that you have everything in allotted time and if you need one of those planners that kind of have the time things that would be really useful for that I don't like like that I kind of like the I'll show you eh. I like my planners to have like the horizontal layout like this just because I usually have a lot of assignments to do and I just kind of like the way that it looks better if I'm being totally honest with you but yeah blocking out time can be a really important and necessary tool so this is my favorite part of the video and for people who are still watching thank you and these are my study hacks and I feel like Throughout school, I've kind of discovered what works for me with studying. Now, everybody is a different type of learner. I consider myself a very visual learner. So for me, these things work very well. So when I'm in a lecture, I take notes on my Surface Pro. Sorry, I have this video laid out on my computer. That's what this Word document is. But in school, um, I will write my notes down in lecture on my Surface Pro because I don't really like bringing notebooks to school. And then in order to study, so when I get home, what I'll do is I'll just set my Surface Pro up on my desk and I'll grab a notebook and I rewrite all the notes from my Surface onto the notebook. This really, really helps you kind of learn the information because writing something down is such a good way to remember it. And if you're writing it down twice, it'll stick in your brain even more. And I like doing that because I'm being totally honest, I like making my notes look really pretty. So I'm not in school right now, but I am reading ahead for next quarter and I will talk about that in a second. So for example, like if I were to be in my chemistry lecture and I'm taking notes, I'll come home and I'll kind of write really pretty notes like this. And the reason why I do that is because it kind of helps my brain and I love it so much. Like I love making my notes look really pretty. Also, sorry if I sound kind of nasally, I've been really, really sick the last couple of days. And then another method that I love using is the whiteboard method is what I call it. So basically you get a whiteboard like this. This was like, I don't know, like $14 at Michael's. What you can do is when you're trying to study for a test or for an exam, you can grab your study guide or you can make yourself a study guide if it's not provided by your professor. And what you can do is you can go put this whiteboard up in your room somewhere and act like you're teaching a class using the whiteboard to teach them. And whenever you get stuck on something, you know that that's what you need to work on. Now, when I was taking philosophy, I did this all the time because it was such a hard, it was so many concepts that were so vast. So like saying it out loud really helped me do good in the class. And so what you can do is you can kind of do it like a couple times. So the first time around, you can kind of highlight the things that you need more help on. You can go research that a little bit more, teach the class again. This is such an amazing method that I really feel like is useful in so many different ways. And another thing that you can use your whiteboard for, if you get a small enough one that's like this nice and portable, you can use it to do math problems on or like chemistry problems anything that has to do with math or physics or something where there's like formulas and equations because that way you can write practice stuff out on here you know and then you won't waste paper by doing practice problems if that makes sense um especially studying for exams um i have a friend who we take all of our math classes together and he has a whiteboard at his house so whenever we have tests we'll just write on it and kind of like do practice problems like that and it's a really really useful way to learn things like that but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to leave a like a comment don't forget to subscribe hit the bell so you get notified every single time i post and i'll see you guys on friday Bye bye